So a lot of people have issues with not being able to double click PowerShell files to run them and when I double click it, it just opens up in my PowerShell ISC and it's possible to change that but you don't always want to do that or you can't always do it. Sometimes you're on somebody else's system or you don't have clearance to just go start making changes like that and there's other issues with execution policy. If you're on a system where you're not supposed to change the execution policy of the system but you still want to be able to run PowerShell code you can't always make changes to the environment but you can do temporary things so that you can still uh, have easy access to scripts and one of the things that I like to do is to include a batch file so that I can run the scripts and I know you're thinking well what about hard coding paths I don't want to have to go in and change a second script every time I want to run my PowerShell script that's just making a lot of work for me and blah 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 hold, hold on okay just can I can I explain thank you alright so what you can do is you can include a dynamic batch file that will always be able to find your PowerShell script no matter where you run it and the key thing for this to work is to make sure that your batch file is always in the same directory as your PowerShell file. So I have this batch file here and I'm going to run it like so. Test.bat. And you'll see that it ran the PowerShell code and it did it with this PowerShell string. So let's take a look at the batch file now. Bloop. You'll notice that all this is the same as it looked like in the command window but then we come to this section over here and it's not pointing to the path of the PowerShell file what's happening these are batch variables and this is what allows us to create this dynamic script so that we can move our scripts around to any folder and still run the PowerShell file just by double clicking that batch file and we don't ever have to change anything inside of this batch file there's only one thing we have to change and it's cosmetic and I'll talk about that in a second but let's talk about what's happening with these variables here these are actually two variables and they start with the percent sign and then they have this symbol here that I believe it's called the tilde but I'm gonna call it the squiggly so you have the percent sign and the squiggly and then DP zero and this is a variable that expands to the current path where the batch file is being run from so that allows us to identify where this batch is being located and to also find other things inside of that same folder so that brings us to this next variable here it's the percent sign, it's the tilde, or squiggly, is what I meant to say, and then it's n0, and this will expand to the name of the batch file. And then I follow that up with a PS1. And what happens when you run this batch file? Well, it's going to expand to the current folder that the batch file is in, and then it will ex expand to the name of the batch file and then it'll add a PS1 at the end. So all you have to do is make sure that your PowerShell file is the same name as your batch file and it will always find that file and run it no matter where it is. So if I change it to TES, we're going to have a little bit of trouble here. Let me make sure that I Call the batch file ts.bat. It couldn't it couldn't find the PowerShell file because it was looking for tes.ps1. And if I change the PowerShell file, then it works. And I can double click it. And it was kind of off screen there. I think you can sort of see the green lettering. But this also means that I can move these two files to any directory that I want and I still don't have to change the batch file as long as it has the same name as the PS1 file it will run from any folder as you can see the green text I couldn't even uh, oh, well I've moved it so now notepad plus plus lost sight of it but still the same 
that is a method that I really like to use to quickly access PowerShell files. It adds an extra script, yes, but the only thing that you have to change in that script is the name of it. And if it's the same name as a PowerShell file located in the same folder, then you can easily run that PowerShell file. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but one thing I do like to include here is the execution policy and set it to bypass because PowerShell by default will have the execution policy set to restricted. So if you go to a different site or you're in an environment where they haven't authorized PowerShell's execution policy to be changed, this will allow you to avoid any conflict with not being able to run your script. So by pointing to PowerShell, setting the execution policy, and using these variables to expand, we can always find our PowerShell script and run it with a simple double click. And that's it. Thanks for watching.